Today on Fresno State Focus, we share tips on tax season and where you can go on campus to get help filing your taxes. The Collegian comes out winning at the Associated Collegiate Press Conference. We, we take you to LA, La Jolla to find out the impact it is having on our fellow student journalists. Plus, an alumnus gives back to student athletes through his deli shop. Fresno State Focus starts now. Welcome to Fresno State Focus. I'm Ethan Mata. And I'm Maxwell Gallegos. We begin today with an important update on a student who was considered missing for over a week. 19-year-old Antonio Jimenez disappeared two weeks ago. His employer, Gazebo Gardens, stayed in close contact with his family and reports he is safe. The family is asking for understanding and privacy on this matter. No matter who you are, no matter where you work, we can all find this time of year to be a little taxing. Catalisi shows us the tips and tricks for tax season this year. Tax season is here. And tis the season for getting a stack of W-2s, 1098s, and other forms in your mailbox. For some students just starting to navigate college and work, it can be overwhelming. It's all new. They don't, it's hard to make sense of all the information and even what to do. So honestly, the entire process can be pretty confusing. Another common challenge of filing is figuring out how to fill out all of the applications correctly. You might owe some, you might get some back. Uh, if you do one thing wrong, you could actually be owing a lot of taxes. The good news is, whether you're a parent, a student, or just an average Joe putting bread on the table, thank you, Joe, you can get help with your dough. Fresno State is one of the few campuses in California that has a money management center. They provide students with financial coaching and resources for any money or tax related topic and then guide students to a tax preparer. There is an awesome organization in the community called United Way of Fresno and Madera County that could do tax preparation for free for the majority of the people. United Way services are available to taxpayers who make under $64,000. And remember, keep all your forms and tax documents together. So we'll say make a checklist, uh, get the documents, put them in a folder, stay organized. At Fresno State, Catalisi, Fresno State Focus. Fresno State accounting students are offering free income tax preparation to the Craig School of Business. Walk-ins are welcome, but you can also schedule ahead by texting or calling this number you see on your screen. The deadline is coming up faster than you can say moolah, so take care of your young money ASAP. Super Tuesday may have passed, but it's still voting season on the Fresno State campus. The student body president's office is up for grabs as students Jaden Baker and Faith Ann Hoven participated in the ASI presidential debate this week. From there, I have been deeply and 100% committed to advocating for those that don't have a voice, for those that are too scared to have a voice, for those that want to say something but can't. That is where I step in. Baker emphasizes advocacy while Van Hoven promises to take a nonpartisan approach if elected. Um, with my debate partner, if we take the conflict and separate it into two different sides, uh, we can really understand where it's coming from, but also how to meet the needs of both sides. Students will receive ballots next Tuesday. Presidential elections are not the only thing happening. There are other positions that students are running for. Earlier today, many of them were talking to students on campus at the ASI booth at the plaza in front of the USU. Senator candidate Melanie Mora said she wants to include more ways of connecting and communicating with students. I want to be more inclusive to the students before I leave. Yes, and I hope whoever takes this position, I hope has the same desire as I do. Election voting will last until March 21st, and students can check their email to receive their ballots. Every year, Fresno State's Communication Department hosts a Peach Blossom Festival where elementary students, kindergarten three, thir, thir, through sixth grade, get to participate in the public speaking on stage. I had the chance to attend this year and see why this festival is important to these young students. Peach Blossom Festival is a celebration of literature and poetry, but it's not all about oral interpretation. It's about so many ways for a student to grow. Come and they're able to perform their pieces, get judged by our judges who get to give like critiques and obviously positive reinforcement. Um, and they're also, a lot of these students are seeing a college campus for the first time, so it's also very fun for them to kind of explore a new area. This is the Peach Blossoms Festival's 66th year. Students recite a poem in front of hundreds of other students who come from schools all around the San Joaquin Valley. 
It's important to these young students because it allows them to start public speaking at an early age, which helps to build their confidence, something that can help them in the long run. Most public speaking is one of the biggest fears in the world. Some people rank it as their number one. And it's to show kids that number one, it's not that scary. And number two, communicating is one of the most crucial skills you can have growing up and going into you know, college. The festival is coordinated by the Department of Communications. It takes a whole semester to put this together and any Fresno State student is welcome to volunteer. In case you missed it and want to participate or volunteer for it, it does happen every year during the spring. So you can find it and you can volunteer next spring semester spring of 2025. This year, thousands of elementary students filled the campus, making it yet again another great turnout here in our speech arts building. To stay updated with the Peach Blossom Festival, you can find them on Instagram at Fresno State Peach Blossom, or you can find them down the hall from our TV studio, room 104. Coming up on Fresno State Focus, ordering food made easier and free food for students thanks to the student cupboard. Plus, how to be aware of screen time on our devices and when we should take a break. Focus are coming up next. Here in the valley, our colors are blue and our waves are red. Bulldog born and bulldog bred. Generations linked forever by traditions that have stood the test of time. Inside our stadiums, we are one. This is our valley, and this year, we're doing it for you. At Fresno State, being bold means committing to something greater than yourself. It's learning by doing, and nurturing leaders to advance our shared future. It's using research to create a better life for those around us and healing those who need us most. These are our stories. Because at Fresno State, bold begins here. Good evening. I'm Summer Reyes with your focus on weather. So as you can see behind me, it's a Smith Camp alumni house where you can pick up your graduation boxes. You can get them from today at 6, tomorrow at 6, and then on Friday from 9 to 4. And now taking a look at our national satellite, you can see that the storm from last week has finally cleared up from Monday and Tuesday, so the weather is pretty nice. Going on to our western satellite, you can see up here it's going to be kind of a small storm coming in, but don't worry, we won't see that this week. It'll be coming next week around Wednesday and Thursday. And now taking a look at today's highs, it's going to be 60s all around, a little bit colder in Mariposa and Shaver Lake, and the same thing for Porterville and then Kalinga. And then for tomorrow's lows, it's going to be in the mid-45s everywhere. And then again, it's being a little bit colder in Mariposa and Shaver Lake. And then Kalinga and Porterville as well. So don't forget to bring a jacket. And then for our air quality, once you look at this, it's going to be green everywhere. Sorry. So make sure to go out and just feel that good weather because we don't see this very often. It's going to be very warm. And then for our extended outlook, you can see that's going to be sunny all week. And then for Sunday, it's going to be St. Patrick's Day, so don't forget to wear green and celebrate that fun holiday. And then for Tuesday, it's going to be the first day of spring. All week, you'll see 60s going on 70s, and for our lows, 40s going on 50s. Now, that's been your focus on weather. Back to you guys at the news desk. The Associated Collegiate Press held its annual spring conference this past week in La Jolla. Al Scott takes us to San Diego for an inside look at this year's conference. In a world rapidly changing, Journalism matters, now more than ever. That was the theme for more than 800 student journalists who came from around the country to participate in ACP workshops. Journalist and Santa Monica College professor Ashanti Blaze Hopkins encouraged reporters to be courageous and push the boundaries. If you know you have a good story that can impact your community, if you know that there is a story that needs to be told, something that needs to be uncovered, be bold enough to advocate for that. The conference featured guest speakers and working professionals of all backgrounds from around the globe. Long Beach State Professor Gary Metzger says events like these are the highlight of his year. I get to meet the best and brightest students 
who are really motivated to want to learn all they can about sports journalism. Metzger says the benefits of the conference are priceless. It's a great opportunity for students to network with other students from other colleges and universities and to network with the professionals. Fifteen students from Fresno State's newspaper, The Collegian, attended the event, including managing editor Valentina Saldana. We'll kind of leave here a little bit more prepared, knowing more how to write differently on topics or how to style things a different way, package videos, all that good stuff. Student journalists have had the opportunity this week to work and collaborate with fellow students and professionals in the industry and attend conferences like the one behind me. One of the biggest takeaways is that the industry of journalism is not dying, but rather it's changing. From La Jolla, California, I'm Al Scott, Fresno State Focus. During the conference, the Collegian was honored for their hard work being voted the fourth best newspaper or news magazine in the country among larger universities. Wyatt Bible, Jasmine Alvarado, Blake Wolf, and Carlos Rene Castro were also honored for their individual works. The River, Park, the River Park Farmer's Market happens every Tuesday night and each week. It celebrates a special food. This past week's theme was guac on the wild side. The event featured live music and food trucks with guacamole-inspired menus. So many people showed up to sample foods from tacos to nachos to even baked potatoes. Each week, there's a special theme. Every week, we want to try and create some new excitement and with the number of food vendors that we have and artists and uh, people that are culinary professionals it's a really great combination to have fun. Next week's event will be a national ag day and will honor agriculture's vital role to the San Joaquin Valley. Waiting in line for food in between classes takes way too long. Summer Reyes teaches us about how you can use an app to order food on campus ahead of time. Fresno State has a personal app that allows staff and students to order food on campus. The app is called Fetch. Corinna Alvarado, a supervisor of Subway, explains how the Fetch app can help people skip the lines. I think that does help the students, you know, a little bit more than standing in line. Um, I do know sometimes it could be a wait when they're in line versus when the Fetch. But again, we try to get everybody out at a timely manner, yeah. Not all restaurants and pop-ups are available on the app, but what you can find is The Habit, Taco Bell, Toss and Chop, Subway, Panda Express, and The Bucket. Some students like to use the app because it allows them to order with no interaction. Generally speaking, um, it's really easy to just order on the app and then go in, get your customized food. It's a lot less intimidating too with like, doing exactly what you want because you're not asking someone, oh, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this, and feeling bad. But um, you can just go there and grab the food and it's really easy. Every restaurant that offers a fat shop will have one of these signs right here that shows you where you can come get your food. All you have to do is come up, say your name, and then you can grab your order. It is a great way to save time in between classes and to save you from waiting in those long lines. At Fresno State, Summer Reyes, Fresno State Focus. Juice It Up in the Student Union is one restaurant that is not featured on the app. Instead, they have their own app. Students who live in Visalia and don't have a way to get on campus can rely on the V-Line bus. The V-Line bus travels from Visalia and has three other stops with the last stop here on campus. Riding the V-Line bus is free for students. Jasmine Neary, a biology major, says she uses it because it helps her save money. And I use the V-Line because it's fast, affordable, and um, saves me some gas. With six trips a day, operating seven days a week, V-Line is the most convenient and affordable way to get back to school and back home. The Amendola Family Student Cupboard at Fresno State is where students can get groceries for free. All you need is your student ID to be able to bring, in home, to bring home fruits, vegetables, and different shelf-stable goods. Certain groceries have a limit on how many you can take. But that shouldn't stop anyone from using this resource on campus. It's very important that I think every university has something like this because it saved me a lot of time and money. The student cupboard is open Monday through Saturday. It's in the Industrial Tech Building room 144. Follow Student Cupboard on Instagram for updates and meal planning tips. Are you aware of how much time you are on your devices? No matter if it's by scrolling on social media, texting or streaming your favorite TV shows and movies, or even watching us on Fresno State Focus, Carissa Guzman explains how we can pay better attention. These days, people can often be found on their devices to pass the times when they are not working, or maybe when they are. 
They would be playing games, going on social media, streaming their favorite music, or texting and calling their loved ones. But do they realize how much time of their day is that? Apple introduced a screen time feature in 2018, so users can be better aware of how much time they spend on their mobile devices. High school senior Mia Gayton says that the feature shows her how long she's really on her phone. It shows how much time that I procrastinate doing what I need to do, like homework or cleaning and just putting that to the side. According to Forbes, the feature was first introduced as a way for parents to see how much their children use their devices. Years later, it has gained a bigger importance and realization. I conducted two polls on Fresno State's subreddit recently to truly see what our students' daily average screen time and most to use social media, to where I saw that the highest amount of screen time was 7 to 9 hours, while their most used social media were platforms like YouTube and Twitch. Even when high schoolers know how much time they spend on their phones, college students are just as aware. Senior Caitlin Shapazian says in order to have less screen time, you should take more time for yourself. I think if you just put your phone away for at least an hour or two a day and actually focus on yourself and do the things that you love, it'll really help you. An article in the Journal of American College Health found that higher levels of screen time is associated with increased anxiety, depression, and stress. Carissa Guzman, Fresno State Focus. Carissa also noticed in the Reddit survey that students who voted don't use X, Snapchat, or Facebook. Oh, by the way, her favorite uh, social media app is YouTube. Are you still trying to stay on track with your New Year's resolutions? Experts say time, money, and a lack of motivation are some of the reasons why people don't stick with the resolutions. But to stay or get back on track, they say, you should share some of your goals with someone you trust and ask a friend to follow up with you to see how the progress is going. Coming up in sports, we take a look at Fresno State's men's basketball emotional senior night before they headed to the Mountain West Tournament. Plus, we give you an update on the Red Hot Diamond Dogs. Stay tuned for sports with Jackson Sanchez. I got the ball that's for you. Up in my head. Up in my head. Up in my head. I got that ball that's for you. Up in my head. Up in my head to save. I got that bulldog spirit down in my toes, down in my toes, down in my toes. I got that bulldog spirit down in my toes, hey, down in my toes to stay. I got that bulldog spirit up in my head, deep in my heart, down in my toes. I got that bulldog spirit all over me, all over me to stay. I got that bulldog spirit deep in my heart. Hello, I'm Jackson Sanchez with your Focus on Sports. The men's basketball team just shook up Las Vegas after pulling an upset in the Mountain West Tournament. The men's basketball team beat Wyoming 77-73. to Senior Isaiah Pope led the team in scoring with 22 points. They will now face off against the top-seeded Utah State Aggies tomorrow afternoon at the Thomas & Mack Center in Las Vegas. Let's go back in time for a moment to Saturday night when the basketball team was in action against the Wyoming Cowboys. Matt Gallegos brings us there for the action and emotion. The college basketball regular season has come to a close. This means for some Bulldogs basketball players, it was the last time they would play in the State Park Center. Fresno State finished up their basketball season Saturday night with senior night, which is more than just basketball. It's connection to this arena, to the city, and to your teammates and coaches. It's a bittersweet ending for seniors who play their last game in this arena. It was an emotional night for both players and coaches. Justin Hudson, Bulldogs head coach, said as much as he didn't want to get emotional, it was inevitable. It was emotional for me, and I didn't know it would be that way. I can't speak for them, you know, but for me, some emotion came over me. He even highlighted Isaiah Hill, who was sitting right next to him on the podium. A player Hudson has coached for four years at Fresno State. I think he's grown a lot on and off the floor. He has wonderful parents. You know, we recruited a good one that was already had some talent, you know, already had a lot of character when he got here. So just going through all the things that we've been through, you know, a lot of games, 
you know, you're going to miss him. Although the dog suffered a big loss, falling to the Wyoming Cowboys 86-47, Hill did not let the fans' pride and love for the team go unnoticed. And that means a lot. Uh, I mean, knowing that we were getting beat by 30-plus or whatever it was, and they still stayed there, that says a lot about this city too as well, uh, giving me a standing ovation and the other seniors. So, I mean, I appreciate that. Although for four of the seniors it was their final game at home, the fans helped those players ensure that they will not be forgotten. From the Save Mart Center, Maxwell Gallegos, Fresno State Focus. The seniors will continue their last dance in the Mountain West Tournament. Again, it's Utah State tomorrow in Las Vegas. Fresno State water polo returns home this weekend to face San Diego State. We head to the Aquatic Center where Al Scott is live with a preview on Saturday's matchup with the Aztecs. Hey guys, I'm here at the Fresno State Aquatic Center. I'm here with sophomore Haley Andrus. How are you doing today, Haley? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing well. Um, Haley recently got her 100th goal. Um, what do you think about that milestone? Uh, I mean, it's a great accomplishment. I couldn't have done it without my teammates and coaches. So just hoping to look forward to get more accomplishments with the team this season, moving forward to conference, hopefully NCAAs. Your team is 13-5, and five, ranked sixth, I believe, in the country right now. Things are clicking on all cylinders. What's the team chemistry like right now? I mean, it's great. We're all friends in and out of the water. Uh, I think it shows in the water we have so much fun playing together. And I think that helps us get through the toughest parts of our season. You guys are ranked, are playing another ranked team um, this Saturday at noon, uh, San Diego State uh, conference game as well. Um, what are you looking forward to in this matchup? I mean, I think we look forward to all of our games. We try to always have the same standard with our games, play really competitive. We're showing that in our practices this week. We always say we play how we, pra we practice, how we play in games. So we're looking forward to a really good game this weekend. And yeah. Uh, when you're not at home, you're on the road traveling, playing water polo, and there's a story that you rate apples. Is that true? Yeah. So it just started with my friends and I um, on our road trips. We would eat apples in the morning. I would always give my ratings of my apples, and we just started recording them and posting them to the Instagram. So a little what, funny joke. What makes a good apple? The crunchiness, the crispiness, and the sweetness. And we can't have it be too dry, so we'll see. Yeah. Do you have a message for the Red Wave uh, looking to come out this Saturday? I mean, yeah, be here if you can. We'd love to have you. We appreciate all your support. Yeah, we'd love to see you out there. Awesome. Do not, be, do not miss out. Come to the Aquatic Center here at Fresno State. I'm Al Scott with Fresno State Focus. Give it back to the studio, Jackson. Thanks, Al. Fresno State Baseball is riding a hot bat right now, producing over 10 hits in four of their past five games including the 13-1-1 win over the 19th-ranked UC Irvine. Those performances resulted in the Diamonds Dogs sweeping the weekly Mountain West Awards. Noah Beal was awarded Pitcher of the Week after his 12th strikeout performance in the upset win over the Anteaters. Alongside Noah Rocco Pepe was named Player of the Week after recording eight RBIs last week. Finally, Cam Schneider recorded a three-hit performance against Columbia on Sunday, earning him Freshman of the Week. Fresno State will be in the Silicon Valley this weekend going against Mountain West favorite San Jose State. The softball team hosted the Bulldog Classic this weekend where they played against three different teams in four days. The team started Friday with a walk-off win against CSU Northridge. The dogs got the bats going over the weekend taking two of three from San Diego Saturday and Sunday. This winning streak wouldn't continue as they fell to Rutgers on Monday 10-1. Softball will be going to Reno to take on Nevada to open up Mountain West play. The 2023 Mountain West Champions Volleyball team is set to compete in six spring matches this offseason, with four hosted games in Fresno State's North Gym. The spring team will return many of their key players, including Mountain West Freshman of the Year, Dione Fraga. The Bulldogs open the spring schedule on March 15th as they host Stancilla State at 5 p.m. A Fresno sandwich shop is, going, is gaining traction for how the business helps out Fresno State student athletes in many different ways. I got to visit and talk with Justin Dervishan, the owner of Dervo's Deli. Dervo's Deli has been open in Fresno for 13 years. Owner and founder Justin Dervishan is an alumnus of Fresno State who loves Bulldog Pride. Uh, born and raised in Fresno, lived here my whole life. Um, yeah, started at Fresno State 2000, graduated 2005, communications degree. And yeah, just 
Fresno State, you know, born a bulldog, still here. Derverson says the memories he made while at Fresno State are what made him want to open a deli right by campus. The spot here when I was in school was a, was a pizza place that we used to come to a lot, and it came available, and yeah, just said, hey, I got some memories there, you know, let's do my own thing now, you know, so I started a sandwich shop, and yeah, I've been doing that since. Derverson's love for Fresno State and Bulldog Pride is what makes his shops unique, as many of his profits actually go towards athletics, and he also provides his own merch for some of the teams. I do stuff with Fresno State football, uh, basketball, men's and women's, uh, softball, uh, the occasional other team soccer occasionally, water polo, stuff like that. One Fresno State athlete says the support division shows to student athletes does not go unnoticed. You know, being able to go to a place that, that has delicious food, um, you know, and, and they're able to give back to us, it, it means the world. Derverson says he can look to expand in the future, but he likes how close he is to his alma mater now. Oh, yeah. Derverson says the next way he wants to help out Fresno State is to start working on NIL deals for the university student athletes. And I can attest to this, Dervo Deli's has amazing sandwiches. My personal favorite is the turkey bacon provolone. You gotta get the bacon mac and cheese. I'm telling you guys, get there. You'll get a free soda if you go if you're a student or faculty. And it's amazing. And that's been your focus on sports. Back to you guys at the desk. One Fresno State faculty member now has her work streaming for the whole world to see. Professor Hanayo Oya produced the documentary series Turning Point, The Bombs, and The Cold War. The documentary is being screened at Fresno State and is now available to watch worldwide on Netflix. Oya Oya uh, says, as a Japanese native, it's important to tell the story of atomic bombings, and the series helps viewers know about today's geopolitical issues. If you take a look at today's world, there's a lot of conflicts and war going on. And if you consider these issues as today's issue, you can really understand the background of these uh, instance, events. The documentary series is split into nine episodes, which will be screened every Tuesday and Thursday during the next couple of weeks. The next screening is tomorrow, and it will show episode two of the documentary inside room 191 of the East Engineering Building at 4 p.m. So will you be going tomorrow to this? I feel like I almost have to. She's my, my radio, radio reporting teacher, and you're telling me that my professor at my university has their own documentary on Netflix? I, I have, have to go. No, that's cool. That's great. Honestly, I won't be able to make it, but I honestly might have to watch it on Netflix with, like, a Granny Smith apple or something. <laughs> right. right. I'll probably do a green apple, but, green I apple? mean, cool. you do you. You know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, yeah. Shoot. <laughs> All right. Well, next week on Fresno State Focus, we will talk to the fall 2024 ASI presidential candidates Baker and Flores on their goals for Fresno State. How do political science students face the stigma that comes with being in their major? Also, grad art student Jose Soria shows us his art gallery. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week.